Albert Einstein, one of the world's greatest geniuses, was offered the presidency of Israel in 1952. You know you're a genius when after you die, your brain gets stolen. Believe it or not, this is what happened to Albert Einstein. What's the value of your brain? I want you to imagine you're Einstein for a second. You had achieved a lot in mathematics, physics and the understanding of the cosmos. And now you can even be a president. Why would you decline? With Einstein living a decent amount of his life in Switzerland, if he became president of Israel, what if he turned the whole nation into the Switzerland of the Middle East? Would he be able to do it? Let us go over the history of Israel and what would change if Albert Einstein became president. Would Israel become the most technologically advanced nation in the world? Maybe the first to reach the moon? I'll answer all of these questions and many more by the end of the video. Before there was Israel, the territory was owned by the United Kingdom. Israel became an independent nation in mid-1948. The state would be located in the Levant, where you had Arab majority in some areas. President Roosevelt promised the Arabs in 1945 that the United States would not intervene in that region without consulting both the Jews and the Arabs. The land on which Israel would be created was held as a colony by the British up until the independence of Israel. The British were against creating an Arab or a Jewish state in the region. This was done because a Jewish state in the territory of Mandate of Palestine would upset the Arabs, with whom the British wanted to have good relations. In May 1946, American President Truman approved of sending 100,000 displaced persons into Palestine. A couple of months later, he publicly supported the creation of a Jewish state. The next year, 1946, the United Nations decided to partition Palestine into a Jewish and Arab states. This proposal came to be on May 14, 1948, when the British pulled out, leaving the Arabs and the Jews to their own demise. The Arab League immediately invaded the new state of Israel, but I will get to this war later. I have a coin from Israel and I want to show it to you because of the back of the coin. It's very interesting that the name of the country, Israel, was spelled out in three languages. First, it was Hebrew, taking most of the space within the coin. Then you have English and more interesting, Arabic. The Arabic language is featured on most Israeli coins and banknotes. Now, back to the video. Thousands of Jews from all around the world went to live in the new Jewish state, displacing the Arabs in the region. This set the world record for most passengers on an airplane in 1991. 1,086 people boarded a plane from Addis Ababa to Jerusalem. When the plane landed, there were not 1,086 people, but three more. This is due to three babies being born during the flight. So, what has Albert Einstein have to do with Israel? Well, to start off, you most likely know that, but he was Jewish, despite him being born in Germany. He lived in the United States for most of his life, together with many German scientists who fled due to the political situation in Germany before the Second World War. Einstein warned the United States that Germany was researching an atomic bomb. Due to his warnings, most likely the United States entered the atomic race. We all know that Einstein is known for being brilliant in mathematics. So, why was he offered the presidency of Israel? And most importantly, why did he decline? When I heard of Einstein becoming the president of Israel, I thought that he would be the first president, immediately after the creation of Israel. This was not the case. Chaim Weissman was elected president of Israel in late 1948. He technically was the president of the provisional government of Israel and he became an official president in February 1949. After the death of Weissman in November 1952, the presidency of Israel was then offered to Albert Einstein. Israeli presidents performed ceremonial duties, so the role is an honor rather than a position of power. Einstein did support the state of Israel, but when he was offered the presidency, he tried to decline it immediately. If Einstein had accepted, then Israel's spiritual and intellectual potential would be the greatest in humanity. Einstein was even assured that as president, he can conduct scientific research with the help of a whole nation behind him. The reply of Albert Einstein to the offer was very simple. I lack both the natural aptitude and the experience to deal with people properly. Basically, he said that he was too old and inexperienced to be a politician. After all, he was known for mathematics and physics. This would raise the very interesting question of what would happen if Einstein did become president of Israel. Perhaps the nation would become the most successful of all time. Let's find out. 
Here is a surprise for you. I will not be using one point of divergence, but two of them. I will explore two alternate history scenarios, one where he becomes president in 1952 and another one where he becomes president four years earlier. How drastic the change can be between the two, let's find out. After the death of Chaim Weissman, Einstein would consider it offer thoroughly, even flying to Israel. I don't think that he stepped foot in the Jewish nation. The people would support him and he would see that it's something he can deal with. After all, the presidency is just a ceremonial role, with no power or important decisions having to be made. Einstein would also enjoy the fact that he can conduct scientific research with basically unlimited funding. This convinced Albert Einstein that him becoming president of Israel would greatly benefit all of humanity, so he accepted the position. Billions would pour into research dictated by Einstein. He would theorize about going into space. Rockets used during the Second World War were clearly very powerful and able to go very far. Israel would be allied with the United States, which would benefit the capitalist side of the space race. Unfortunately, Albert Einstein would die as he did historically in 1955. He would rule Israel for only three years, by far not enough to reshape the country. Einstein was very much against war. This is maybe because he lived and worked his youth in Switzerland. I assume that he would want Israel to be like Switzerland, very successful and neutral in foreign affairs. This would bring much needed stability to the Middle East, something that was happened when it was all colonized by the French and the British, or the Ottoman Empire itself. With Einstein ruling Israel for three years, nothing much would change. He would set values for the nation, where education and innovation would be a top priority. We are here to enable your full potential as we have with countless worlds across the galaxy. Israel would be a bit better off than it is in our timeline, but still not to the full potential of the nation. After Einstein's death in 1955, somebody else would need to take over as president. Just one year later, in October 1956, the Suez Crisis would unfold. Israel, France and Britain attacked Egypt to retake control of the Suez Canal. Israel was successful in occupying the Sinai Peninsula, but they were forced to retreat both from the United States and the Soviet Union. Israel might have a harder time in this conflict due to them just changing president and people would mourn the death of history's greatest mind, Einstein. What I just discussed is the more realistic alternate history option. Let us sacrifice a bit of realism to achieve a really interesting alternate history scenario. What if Einstein was the first president of Israel, not the second? This would give him additional 4 years to change the country. This would make Einstein rule Israel for 7 years, rather than just 3 as in the previous scenario. To achieve this, Einstein needs to become president even before the creation of Israel. He would need to become president of the provisional government of Israel in 1948, just like Chaim Weissman. This would allow for Einstein to start improving Israel before it was even created officially. There is just one very small problem with this however. This would be the Arab-Israeli War of 1948, immediately after the creation of Israel. This war consisted of several Arab League members declaring war on Israel. After hours the creation of Israel, the Arab countries of Egypt, Transjordan and Syria invaded. As you can imagine, it went extremely well. For Israel, that is. The Israelis somehow managed to win this conflict, believe it or not. But how did this happen? Well, there is that the Jordanian and Egyptian kings were more concerned about their own gains rather the gains of Israel. This can be seen after the armistice agreement. Egypt gained Gaza and Jordan gained the West Bank. Palestine ceased to exist for the time being. Israel took 60% of the lands that were originally promised to the Arab state. This is a big oversimplification of the war. There was a truce after a month of fighting, which was forced by the United Nations. The truce favored Israel, so after it ended, Israel was more successful in pushing. So, how would this war change if Albert Einstein was the president? Einstein was a pacifist, so he would prefer to resolve this issue diplomatically. I don't think that Einstein would believe that Israel would be victorious, at least not initially. If Einstein was in a position of more power, I believe that he would have surrendered Israel, greatly reducing their borders. As I stated already, his role was mostly ceremonial, so I doubt that his presidency would affect the war or at least change its outcome. What would happen after the war is more important. Einstein clearly made a mistake and underestimated his country. This would lead for him to have great ambitions for further development of science. On 29th of August 1949, the Soviet Union successfully tested their own nuclear bomb. 
This would scare the Western countries, but most importantly, the United States of America. This had just begun the nuclear arms race. A doctrine of mutual assured destruction was established between the United States and the Soviet Union. Most likely, if it wasn't for nuclear weapons, then both countries and their allies would go to war. Einstein was a pacifist, but as he saw that the nuclear weapons can also prevent conflict, he would start the Israeli nuclear program. This would serve as a deterrent of war to neighboring Arab countries. Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion also supported the idea historically. He was apparently obsessed with nuclear weapons and wanted Israel to have their own. After all, Einstein, Oppenheimer and Taylor were Jews, yet they helped the United States with their own nuclear weapons. He argued that Israel clearly has the minds to create such weapon, so it's only a matter of time. Historically, Israel started their own nuclear program around the same time as they did in this alternate history. With Einstein being alive, however, I would assume that Israel would come in possession of a couple of nuclear weapons in the 1950s, maybe before Einstein's death in 1955. President Einstein would assert that Israel must try to remain neutral in the Cold War. He would try to turn Israel into the Switzerland of the Middle East. The borders with other nations would be heavily fortified. In 1956, one year after the death of President Einstein, Britain and France would invade Egypt to restore their access to the Suez Canal. Historically, Israel also invaded, but this time they wouldn't participate. This would have several implications on France and Britain themselves. They would be condemned both by the United States and the Soviet Union. To them, this would signal that they are no longer global powers. Before they do something, they must consult it with the United States. Perhaps the French and British would form their own faction, the Imperialist, as a third pillar in the Cold War. I already made a similar video, so you can check it out when you are done watching this, I will remind you later. The Soviet Union would launch their own artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, in 1957, two years after the death of Einstein. The legacy of Albert Einstein would live on, as the nation of Israel would prioritize space exploration and nuclear development. This would lead me to think that Israel would participate in the space race, where they can be the first to achieve a certain milestone. Israel's policy of non-alignment wouldn't be enough. They would clearly benefit if they work together with the United States and the Western countries. The Soviet Union would assert themselves as protectors of the Arabs, so there would be no other choice for Israel. Israel and the United States would start working on space projects together. By that time, the Soviet Union would be ahead of them by a long shot. They had put the first satellite into space, as well the first animal in space, the dog Laika. The Soviet Union was just too good. In 1959, they landed the first human-made object on the lunar surface. Historically, the United States would land on the moon with a crew of three astronauts 10 years later. This makes the United States the only country to successfully land people on the moon in human history. The Soviet Union was the first in many things related to space. As you can see in this very popular meme, the United States only landed on the moon with a crew of astronauts. But if all of that changed, and Israel helped the United States, perhaps out of the three astronauts that landed on the moon historically, one would be Israeli and the other two American. Perhaps this goal would be achieved a bit sooner. Two years before the historical moon landing, in 1967, there was a war known as the Six Days War. It saw once again an Arab coalition trying to destroy Israel. You won't believe me when I say it, but Israel was victorious once again. They occupied some lands, most notably the Sinai Peninsula, although it was later returned to Egypt. If Einstein was the president before the war, most likely Israel would have nuclear weapons by the time it comes around. Perhaps it could have gone nuclear or be totally avoided. This would be very difficult to predict. Albert Einstein becoming the president of Israel surprisingly doesn't change the country much. They still fight the same wars and perform similarly in them. There are just more scientific breakthroughs in Israel, not only the United States and the Soviet Union. I will remind you to check out this video where France and Britain unite. There you can also learn more about the Suez Crisis. See you there.